Babu Hakimusika, welcome, how are you? This is Bob from Love Beyond the Sea. That means it's time for this live stream to get started. It's 6 p.m. here in um, in uh, the Midwest, in the United States, and uh, not feeling my best, but I am ready to uh, talk about uh, risks in the Philippines. And um, uh, it could be risks with um, moving there. It could be risks having to do with um, a Filipina that you have uh, gotten to know. And I'm going to find some uh, uh, bullet points here um, since I can, can no longer print, uh, print notes. So today we're going to talk about uh, what risks are you taking in the Philippines? So um, I think you might need to, yeah, might need something to sit on here. Hold on. Oh. There we go. It looks a little bit better in the camera. So um, what risks are you taking? in the Philippines. So uh, mostly um, I'd like to hear from from you guys tonight. Um, you know, I'm going to share mine because I, I have had some thoughts about this. So um, I, I don't mind sharing those with you. They may or may not be your concerns, uh, but you, uh, you know, we could probably help each other. You know, um, you may think of some that I haven't thought of and, and maybe I'll think of some that that you haven't thought of. And uh, please subscribe, comment, share, get notifications for upcoming videos. Um, Love Beyond the Sea is about foreigner Filipino relationships, anything and everything that has to do with that. Um, that's what I, I wanna spend my time, months, years talking about. Um, and it could be a, a lot of different topics, especially as, uh, as my marriage continues. Um, I got married in um, May of 2015 to my Filipina. We knew each other for a very short time, and, and now we've been married over four years. So I'd like to pass on uh, anything that, um, that I can to, to help other people. So current expats, uh, please comment about your risks and, and how that has turned out. Uh, for example, was it much to do about nothing? Um, you know, what were you concerned about? And, and, you know, how have you dealt with those things? So to get started, um, moving to the Philippines is certainly on a lot of people's minds. Right after I posted a, um, a, the promo uh, for tonight, um, about the topic, I saw all about the Philippines had a, a video about do you have the right mindset uh, when uh, going to the Philippines? And then next thing I know, Big Rob had a video, 12 popular reasons to retire in the Philippines. So I know people are uh, thinking about retiring in the Philippines. And, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, they spent more or less time thinking about what they're getting into. And uh, as we, my wife and I, have decided to retire there, well, I've had to start thinking very seriously about um, about what we're getting into, because you know it is it is a big move. Um, there's pros and there's cons, but since we do have about four years or so, um, you know, we're we're still kind of gathering our thoughts about. Uh, going to the Philippines and, and what the risks are, um, I don't know that they would be very risky for my wife because she lived there for 27 years before uh, marrying me, and then she's been here for about three years, and we've been married for over four years. So I think most of the risks are mine. Now, as far as in general for people, um, you know, relationships uh, are something that, that come up a lot as far as being risky. Um, What's risky about the relationship? Well, people say uh, getting scammed is one thing. They're concerned about finding a, a Filipina that has good intentions, that just wants to find 
a good husband mm-hmm. isn't looking to, um, you know, take him to the cleaners. Um, uh, another concern is, um, is she single? Because, you know, she could be married. She could be married and involved in a scam, uh, with you. That does happen. And, um, there's endless amount of videos on YouTube about recognizing scams. Um, I never really had the impression that there was anything to worry about, excuse me, with my wife, because she didn't, she didn't ask me for money. Sure. We got married in 54 days, but she, um, she didn't seem like she wanted to, to talk about it. Um, she, she wasn't really curious about it. And, um, hi, hi, J bud 5,000, uh, welcome tonight. Thank you for being here. Um, so my wife, I didn't really see her as a risk. And I suppose if she were to have, uh, scammed me, she could have, I don't know, won my heart somehow. And, and, uh, but you know, like, like most of us, I'd like to think that, you know, I had enough common sense to, you know, to, to look for things. She never asked me for, for money. It was heading, had issues that I needed to send her money for, um, outside of just for us, you know, the, the immigration and going to Manila and uh, going to Cebu for the conference for Filipinos overseas, that sort of thing. You know, I offered to pay for some medical testing before she even went to St. Luke's just in case that there was something there that we would need to deal with um, so that the whole process wouldn't be delayed. And, and that turned out, uh, turned out fine. So, you know, that's just one main thing. Probably the biggest thing is, of course, not asking for money, not having displays of um, uh, emotion or, or feelings or being in love that really are misplaced and, and they don't deserve to be there. Um, and uh, Jay Bud mentions healthcare and emergencies while you're out in the province. And healthcare is, uh, I will get to it certainly on, on my list, emergencies while you're out in the province. You know, some people just go to the Philippines and they have the attitude that what happens, happens. And uh, if it's meant to be, it's it's meant to be. So if they don't have health insurance, the one thing that I've ran across a lot is um, not being able to leave a hospital without having sufficient money to pay for the bill. Now, if other people have heard more about that, then uh, you can certainly let us know tonight. Um, But if you're out in the province and you're far away from somewhere, who knows, maybe you'd have to take a ferry ride somewhere before you can can get an an ambulance. Jay Bud mentioned sketchy ambulance service, uh, no life flight. Well, I didn't know that, uh, J. Bud, but I can I can imagine that that's the case. We're not talking about being here in the United States. I know a guy at work that had to be um, uh, life flighted uh, from one city to another, and um, it saved his life. I mean, he was practically dead before uh, uh, he was able to be uh, revived, and they flew him somewhere now. If he had been in the province, you know, he he would have died, or who knows, maybe even worse, had some kind of brain damage, um, you know, lack of oxygen, lack of proper care, and that that is a concern. It could happen here in the United States, but it's more likely to happen if somebody's out in the province. And um, yeah, sketchy ambulance service. Um, I'm not sure, uh, J Bud, what you mean by that. Uh, sketchy uh, or dubious. I mean, I would think if uh, I know they have nine one one, but I, that may be in Davao only. I'm not sure if Duterte's got that in other places, or it's starting in Davao, or maybe it's in some of the bigger cities right now. Nine one one. I think I actually have seen an ambulance or two uh, roll through uh, Davao when we were there. Um, but you know if you need help right away and you're living so far away from you know an ambulance or or calling for a taxi or having somebody 
get you in a, a, a scooter and, and take you somewhere, then that would be very problematic. Um, you know, I don't know. That's just, that. that is a risk that I would not personally take. I'm very concerned about, you know, the healthcare and, and emergencies. Um, we're going to be in, uh, we won't be in the province uh, in Davao City, but if, uh, if something happened, let's say I started to feel really weird, was getting dizzy, passed out or something, you know, since we've got so much of our family around, I think it would be very easy to, um, to go where we need to go um because there there would be you know we family say we i mean they have um sidecars and and uh we may have our own car you know when we retire there but i don't think it's going to be too difficult for us to to get somewhere if we really need it because we wouldn't be in the provident uh, province um Michael and Heidi, welcome. What is sad, a lot of the bad stories are from guys who went to Philippines that had no money in the first place. And uh, medical is not expensive in the Philippines. Well, I guess it all depends on, on what we're talking about. I mean, you might recall um, uh, Mike, is it from, I don't watch his channel, so I'm not sure. The, he had a heart attack. I think I think his bill was around 30000 USD. Can't think of his name. I have seen plenty of videos though. And um, well, he, he was able to get that from his viewers and then some, you know, it's a, a pretty, pretty, uh, but again, you know, not everybody that goes there has 20, 30, 40,000 subscribers and, and can make an, a, an appeal and, and have them, you know, help with that kind of money. Um, that is definitely not the norm and but I, I don't think it's as expensive but um you know you're not going to have insurance is is one of the concerns and for example um aetna insurance which was the only one i looked at because i figured they're all about the same um to insure uh isa and i both in uh, southeast asia would be about Five hundred fifty dollars, probably six hundred by you know the time we would retire, if not more. And I remember seeing about twenty-two pages, was it, of things that they do not cover, and like pre-existing conditions. Um, and it was just, it was totally unappealing, and I, I just have totally dropped that. And I wouldn't be surprised that they're all like that, very expensive, cover nothing, because they know that. If you're in the Philippines, you're probably older, which means you probably already have issues and you're more likely to, to have health concerns. And so it almost is, is not even uh, worth it. But going anywhere, you know, without money in the first place for anything, not to mention medical uh, issues, is certainly um, taking a big, big risk, in fact, you know, I don't know. Um, that just doesn't seem like like a good idea. Uh, everybody's situation is different. Uh, who knows what their story was back in uh, the country they came from. Um, but, you know, even people that have been healthy all their life as they get older, uh, things can happen. And, um, yeah, you want to have uh, somebody the other day recommended, you know, I can't remember who it was. Um, one of the vloggers taking up having about five thousand dollars, putting into your emergency account, and then building it every month from that point, which is a good idea. However, you know if you've got something that's going to cost you know fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand um, dollars, well, then you might not have enough. Then uh, what are you going to do if they? decide they don't want you to leave in, until you've paid or can show some kind of way that you are going to be able to pay. And that is um, a big concern. Jay Bud, I've heard the private hospitals in major cities are okay. 
public hospitals, smaller medical centers are not well thought of, and, and sometimes they can't do for you what you need, and, and you will be sent to um, the bigger uh, hospitals, which maybe are the, the private ones. And um, so, I mean, Cebu, Davao, Manila, I suppose those are, are probably better, being that they're the, the biggest ones. Um, and there's always uh, the public hospitals, but uh, for just routine things, like I had a terribly sore throat when I was there and, and we went to the doctor. I don't even, didn't even ask guys what it costs. Had to do some blood tests and then uh, had to go uh, get some prescriptions, you know, and um, it didn't cost very much, but that's, that's not a big deal. That's not like, you know, hey, I just got in an accident and I broke my neck. I broke my leg or, or my knee finally went and now it needs to be replaced or my hip needs to be replaced or I just had an aneurysm or something like that. You know, I mean, I mean, if that happened here in the States, I mean, if you're under Medicare, that's a whole nother issue, then um, you're a lot better off if you have Medicare. If you have Medicare, you won't be able to use it in the Philippines anyway. Um, I, I hope somebody can let me know if um, if Guam would be able to help with uh, if for a person that's 65 and older has Medicare, if they would have to go to Guam or if they would have to come um, to the United States. Uh, yeah, heart attack, same operation he got. If it was 30,000 USD, it would have been 10 times that amount. Um, that's... Uh, kind of a concern. I mean, you, you don't want to just die. Um, that is a concern. Most people that I know of, their their biggest concern is what if this happens medically? You know, you might look very healthy and be healthy, um, but you don't know. I mean, hopefully when somebody goes to the Philippines, they've gone to the doctor every year. They've had all kinds of checkups. They've had things done. Um, that they're they don't really want to risk doing in the in the Philippines now you know I've had my knee I've had three knee surgeries I could get it replaced tomorrow if I pushed hard enough um, I, I had two neck surgeries canceled due to incompetence and uh, I've had three shoulder surgeries so um, I'm trying to get these things out of the way because I'd rather not do them uh, with a doctor that's not familiar with me in another country. I just would rather not. So I'm hoping that I can get all that stuff done uh, before we before we go. Um, that doesn't mean that there couldn't be something else. Uh, people get cancer. People have you know heart attacks. They have strokes. I don't know if that's quite the same thing. And um, they could get into an accident. You know, uh, they could just get get sick. I mean, they could, who knows? Um, but the main thing, you want to be able to get help fast. And then, of course, you want to be able to pay for it. Yeah, you know, heart attack, not good. Um, <laughs> Tom and Ruth, Philippine Adventures. Hello, 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 Tom. Just getting started, uh, Jay, Bud, Michael, and Heidi are here talking about risk-taking the Philippines. What are you willing to risk? Uh, Tom has been there for a while, you know, and you probably had some kind of risk assessment before making the move to the Philippines. And, um, you know, most of us here, I think, would agree that health concerns, big stuff, not, you know, not small stuff, but, you know, heart attack, you know, cancer, broken bones, um, your joints need to be replaced, things like that. Um, things that could take a long time to recover from, things that you you need immediate help. Um, those are all those are all very big concerns. Um, uh, nobody was expecting the rule changes to actually go into effect. They have been a draft for one year now, and uh, uh, is this? Um, Something about um, health, I mean, um, uh, immigration in the Philippines and, and risk-taking, I'm not up on that. Uh, Michael, if you don't mind 
sharing that um, today. Okay, U.S. CIS announced the new rules going in effect for visas October 15th. Now, I, I, uh, once in a while, I get some information from the Philippines on Google. It uh, shows up there, but I hadn't seen anything about that yet. And so that's something that if somebody, um, and, and I suppose that, that would be for people that are not even necessarily married or going to marry, be married, just, just going to the Philippines, wanting to retire in the Philippines. Um, health insurance is so important. Good friend is sick, but will not go to the hospital. Well, hopefully he's not avoiding going to the hospital <laughs> because he doesn't want to pay the bills. Um, if he knows what's wrong and it's happened before and he can just gut it out, well, that's one thing. But if he doesn't know what's wrong, um, you know, he may, he may regret that. The draft rules are now going to affect regarding, oh, public charge for USA. Um, you know, talking about risk taking, going to the Philippines, you know, you don't want to go and regret it. You want to get all the information you can. You're still going to have to decide how likely is this to happen? How likely is that to happen? And I think it's a lot like investing. How much money can you invest and sleep well at night on? If you're constantly checking the stock market, if you're starting to sweat it out every time i appreciate the thumbs up you're, you're starting to sweat it out when you see the the stock go down and or it's been down for a month or so um you, you need to be able to uh, to know what kind of a risk you can handle um an increase in income requirements for spousal and fiance visa well that's that's good to know now um the uh, income requirements i don't think were very expensive in the first place okay. i'm just going to guess somewhere in the neighborhood of i don't know 23 24 25000 a year doubling the requirements would um whatever they are now would be um, quite a bit and what do you do if you what if you do if you're older mm -hmm. and you meet the requirements today but then a year or two later, when she gets to your country, you've retired and now it goes down. Um, is that gonna is that gonna be a problem? I mean, do you have to prove that for the, the next rest of your life they're going to um, they're going to uh, you're gonna have to meet that double requirement? Um, I appreciate that, Tom, uh, for the thumbs up. Um, yeah, whatever that is, I, I should look at that because eventually somebody's going to ask it again. And uh, it sounds like a pretty big change. I didn't even know changes were in the work were in the works there. Uh, it goes up to 250 percent federal poverty, so it must have been 125. And um, I don't have those numbers right now, uh, but that is. That is something people are going to uh, going to want to know. I just haven't heard any caught any wind of that at all. Um, one of the things that can make a person feel like they're taking a lot of risk is if they hear a lot of negative talk about the Philippines. You don't want to hear all, you know, uh, rose garden stuff either. But a lot of negative talk without you know checking out the facts. Um, can make a person um, not go uh, to the Philippines. It can make him um, not look for a Filipina because he's he's heard so many bad things. He begins to uh, accept it as truth, and you know that may not be true at all. It may be that person's particular experience. Uh, I saw a comment here. Yeah, typhoons. Weather is is another is another issue. Um, typhoons. In Davao, fortunately, uh, where we're going to be living, where my wife is from, um, they they seem to be at a location where they don't get the brunt of these typhoons. You know, maybe some leftover, but just nothing, nothing like the the brunt that some places live in a, a bad uh, area for these things. And there's also uh, earthquakes. I've seen earthquakes, you know, since 
since we got married in the Philippines. One of them was felt in Davao. I think that was like a couple of years ago. Um, volcanoes, I suppose. Uh, occasionally, you may see a volcano go off there. Uh, but you, you should check the weather. I mean, let's say you've got a, a fiance uh, and, and she's she's there, and, or maybe you're going to go live there where she is, and and you look into the weather. I mean, you might have to convince her to try to live somewhere else that's that's safer if you really care about her, uh, whether she would do that and, and move away from her family or not um, would be an issue. Um, I mean, I, if Isa was living in, you know, some typhoon alley, you know, to borrow the phrase tornado alley like we have here in the Midwest, I wouldn't want her to live there. I would want her to be uh, in a in a safer place because I'd like to, you know, think that I could uh, protect her by getting getting out of there. Yeah, increase in income requirements for spousal and fiance visa. I'll have to check that just to get more uh, specifics about that. Yeah, affect a lot of retired guys in social security. Um, they need to. Um, they need to. Uh, I guess I'll have to call USCIS. Uh, and, and there's a video for um, Tom. Tom. Tom's covered all kinds of things that maybe something that he can do because he's got a very large audience and um, that may be something, um, something to consider. Um, making your money last. Making your money last. We talked about not wanting to run out of money and how much you need. Of course, that all depends on your situation, if you're going to be in the province, uh, if you're going to be in the city, what kind of um, standard of living you want to have, that's that's always going to be an issue. And uh, can you make your money last? Well, even if you're really good at budgeting, what happens? I mean, are you budgeting in those, those um, health considerations, uh, like a major catastrophic situation? Uh, that you really can't budget for because it's just too much money. Do you have a separate account, you know, that would cover something like that? Um, but running out of money was something I, I listed here. And if you're concerned about possibly running out of money, you know, think about why and and see if there's something that can be done about that. Otherwise, um, even though it might be very tempting, uh, you don't want to run out of money in a in another country, uh, that that's a risk that that uh, that I would not want to take. Um, Manila doesn't accept co-sponsor for K-1 fiance fiance visa. Um, I didn't know that. Too many loser expats on disability checks are uh, drinking themselves homeless. Well, yeah, I mean if you if your money isn't lasting because you know you, your your vices are getting the best of it. Um, you know, drinking isn't going to make you forget that the money maybe isn't going to last. And, and that's, uh, that's a problem. Not every expat goes there, but the beer is probably cheaper. The vices are probably cheaper. And if you, you know, you, you can't afford to be, um, spending on stuff like that, then, uh, you're going to run out and, and the, then that could even affect your health down the road. And again, we've been talking you know, having money to take care of stuff in emergency is important. And the we all want to live, go to the Philippines and live a long time. Well, the longer you live, the more likelihood something's going to happen. I mean, I think if every man lived long enough, we'd all die of prostate cancer. Um, not everybody does, and uh, but that doesn't mean they they don't have it. They may not even know it. Um, but that's. Uh, that's an important thing. Um, you know, get that, get your PSA checked, uh, you know, before you go, try to know what shape you're in before you even go um, to the Philippines. Um, you know, getting overcharged, that's, I don't know, that's, that's going to happen early on. But, you know, if you feel like you're never going to get a fair shake, um, then uh, that would be a concern. I expect to get overcharged. You know, I got overcharged in the airport for 
I think it was a, a Sprite or a bottle of water and a, and a muffin. I got overcharged. They didn't want to give me my change back. I just stood there while they twiddled their thumbs. And then I said, you know, I showed them the prices. You owe me a change. And they just didn't say anything, just looked off into space. And then they started serving other people. And I, and I told my wife about that. And she marched over there and, and uh, you know, gave them a lecture for uh, taking advantage of me being a foreigner. I've been overcharged for half a dozen eggs. You know, um, it helps if you have a Filipina around you. Um, you know, if you're out of sight, she's not going to get charged. If you're standing there, they probably will overcharge you. Um, in general, I think it's it's good to have a have a Filipina there with you for for lots of reasons. And I appreciate the the thumbs up. Um, so, overcharge a taxi? Well, yeah, taxi airport. Uh, New York Mets fan 2016. Thanks for joining us here uh, today. And um, taxi, yeah, uh, we did too. The first thing that happened to us after I met her, we were taking a taxi, and uh, right away she knew I was being. Um, um, I think it was like double or something that they were charging me and and that we almost got kicked out of the taxi uh, because Isa was going nose to nose with him um, when he had a chance to turn her out. I mean, she was hot, you know, um, before almost before we could barely introduce ourselves. Um, and even though she was with me, Filipina, didn't matter. Uh, we got overcharged big on that one. Yeah, something at San Francisco Airport. I'm sure they're all. Uh, you almost have to take a loan out to to buy things at, at airports. Um, they so overcharge me all the time. You just get Ruth to do it all. Yeah, I agree, Tom. I mean, um, it's just safer that way. Especially the more expensive the the item that you're buying, the more you know, the more it's gonna more it's gonna cost you. And um, that's just that's just the way it is it's it's wrong and we don't do that here in the states but i can understand why that happens that doesn't make it right and i think most Fili filipinos would agree with that that doesn't make it right but you do you do tend to get taken advantage of as a foreigner um j bud you're always a guest no matter how long you're there not a citizen philippines government owes you nothing and I, I agree, you know, you're, you're a guest and, and uh, you've made the choice, hopefully an educated decision to go live in the Philippines. Thankfully, there's many, many good uh, channels out there. Um, you know, Tom and Ruth, Philippine Adventures, Rike's uh, videos, Life Beyond the Sea on uh, going to the Philippines are kind of the gold standard. And, um, and there, there are others. There's lots of information out there on people that are serious about uh, going to the Philippines to live. But, you know, you can't do anything about the weather. And to an extent, there's not much you can do about getting overcharged, especially if you're on your own. Um, but, yeah, you, you are a guest. I, I agree uh, very much with that. Um, Another thing for somebody that's not used to being in the Philippines, I would worry about is getting getting around without getting lost. I mean, it's bad enough here for me where I live, but um, or going to a new state and driving around on vacation. But you know, I don't recall there being a lot of road signs, so you just have to get used to the landmarks, which are all new. And uh, getting around can be difficult. I don't know. I would have to get a I don't mind the jeepneys and the uh, and, or the taxis, but you know, again, that could get more expensive than than it should be. But um, getting lost, uh, if I was there without Isa, um, first of all, I just don't think I would do it. Um, I would be, I would really be a fish out of water. That's for sure. Uh, Rike moved to Vietnam and talked about how dangerous it is in the Philippines. A strange timing. Well, some places certainly are, you know, and I don't know. I have not kept up on uh, on, on his uh, adventures, but yeah, he is in uh, Vietnam, and uh, 
uh, still making quality videos. And I think he's still making some videos about the Philippines. And he's he was there, what, six years or so. So, you know, he has a, a right to do that and a lot of, uh, a lot of good information. Um, danger can happen anywhere. Danger can happen in, in Davao. And um, while we're talking about danger, uh, there is probably still a drug problem that Duterte has not been able to eradicate in, um, I think he's been there, what, two and a half years, maybe. And um, where he thought in six months he could, you know, eradicate the drug problem. Well, uh, it just hasn't happened. And he did say it's worse than he thought it was. Um, now that he's the president after being mayor of Davao City for 22 years, he said it was worse than he thought it was. And, um, you know, you can read up on all the killings, whether they're, you know, um, extrajudicial killings or not. Uh, I don't know. But, um, you know, somebody on drugs could, could, you know, you know, harm somebody anytime or, or they may attack you because they need the money for the drugs and they figure that you have the money. So are you, you know, just being there alone, walking around alone? Are you willing to risk that? Certainly some places you should never even do it um, in or at night. Never. I would never go out alone at night. Um, I would feel safe in the day, I guess, if I went to the mall, although I'd feel better with Isa's family around, uh, which I think will be the case. Um, New People's Army is a big problem in, in this part of Mindanao. And um, and the locals can tell you, you know, where the, the bad places are. And you would want them, you would want them to tell you um, there are bad places here in the United States you wouldn't go to. There are bad places in your own city you wouldn't go to especially at night. And so that's the case everywhere, but not every place has the reputation for having the drug problem that the Philippines does. And if somebody's desperate enough, uh, who knows what they could do um, to get that money, or maybe they're driving around under the influence. I don't know, but that is, that is a scary thing that, you know, can kind of happen anywhere. Um, but your safety, you know, your safety from being attacked because you're a foreigner. Uh, I've read many times. I mean, was it the same man I, I told you that had the heart attack? His name is Mike. Philippine Adventures or something like that. And, and he, I saw a video where he had been robbed like five times, burglarized, I should say, five times. Um, well, that's, that's kind of a concern, too. Uh, whether you're assaulted, robbed, burglarized, um, having that Filipino wife around, having her family around where we are, we'll have her family around pretty much all the time, unless the eyes and I just want to go somewhere by ourself. Um, we're going there in uh, later in the year in December for a month, and I imagine we're going to have family around. And most of the time, I want it that way. I want to get to know her family, the children. So they're not so afraid of me like they they have been and uh just have fun and um, um i'm looking forward to that but i don't feel like going out and getting lost and you know i'll have a phone isa will make sure i can communicate um you know but still i would feel very uncomfortable if i said hey uh someone dropped me off at the mall for a few hours or i'm going to go to a movie by myself i don't know i'm not crazy about even that i'd like to have isa around all the time devout is supposed to be safe and um well that's what that's what the locals say but you know once in a while you might read something where that's propaganda that's not true that's just what they want you to believe um i don't know if my wife however says it's safe, then that's, that's a good eyewitness there. Uh, I had brought, bought her the wedding ring and, uh, I think I told her how much it costs. And, and, uh, the guy that sold me or they insured the ring, uh, which incidentally I haven't seen for like four years, I think 
I think what happened was they they stopped insuring rings or they went out of business. I don't know. I can't. Uh, I just can't remember. But um, he told me, well, now make sure you tell your 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 wife in the Philippines um, not to wear their her ring when she goes out. So I passed that information on to Isa and, and got a lecture on how safe it is in the Philippines and and uh, she doesn't have to worry about their uh, worry about that in the Philippines wearing her ring and. Um, you know, she has worn her ring there and, um, you know, no, no problems with that as far as, as I can tell. Outside of the city, rural areas can be dangerous. Um, I suppose the farther are you, you away from people, uh, that could be, uh, could be a problem. Uh, but many people are talking about moving to Davao because of their belief that it is a safe place. And um, because of my wife's influence, I'm of the belief that Davao is also definitely a safe place. So we, we kind of touched on the weather. You want to know what the weather's like, where you're going to be. Um, another thing I just jotted down here, you know, and this, this would apply to me because, you know, we, we've, let's say, well, my wife got here in 2016. Let's say we retire in 22, 23. So now we'll have six, seven, eight years of marriage and then go back to the Philippines. Um, how will that being back at home now affect our marriage? Well, for one thing, I don't want to go out there and, and, and have to compete with uh, family and friends for her time. Uh, the same time I realize I can't expect to dominate her time because she's with her family and friends. On the other hand, she has to realize I just left all of mine, you know, for like 62 years. On the other hand, um, a lot of those uh, have disappeared since they got married. And uh, I wasn't. And I really haven't been able to connect with them since I got married for whatever reason. So, um, you know, I'd like to make some new friends um, over there in the Philippines, um, you know, expats and locals uh and, and i don't know why that that would be um unattainable uh but as far as the marriage um with her family being around um you know in fact living with us some of them um you know i i'll be the 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 boss of the no, i hate i hate to use that word i i am the head of my my wife i'm I'm the one she has to listen to. Um, I try to defer to her whenever, whenever possible, but um, you know she has to listen to me before her family. And like the Bible says, you get married, you leave your father and your mother, you, you join to your uh, spouse, you become one flesh, which is ultimately in having children. In a lesser extent, you know you 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 live without the influence of, of the family, and. Um, for us, that could be something that we'll have to talk about. I don't want any arguments um, with uh, who's got the influence. And I, I don't think that's, I'm just not expecting that to be a problem. But, you know, how will my weather or my uh, marriage change? Well, we'll we'll see each other more. We should um, uh, because of the, the different shifts and the fact that we're both working. You know, my wife's working 50 60 hours a week i'm working six days a week well, that could change any day if i just decide to get this knee done or my neck done or if i'm just done some days i just feel like i'm just done but we got to keep going uh, for a while longer so i i expect to see my wife more when we're there and and i want to see her family too and we'll see you know we'll just see how that goes but Hopefully that family dynamic, uh, you know, is just good for us and, uh, and not bad. As far as the health care um, and insurance, here's what I plan on doing. I mean, I can get Medicare taken out, which would be about $140 a month. That would be at age 65. And um, to get that, though, to get any benefit, I have to come back to the United States for some kind of vacation, I guess. And um, then I can utilize it. 
there's uh, thing places online you can go to um, to come back and, and get some kind of uh, supplemental insurance, um, but you can use the uh, uh, H65 Medicare, but you'd have to be in the United States. Maybe by that time, you know, it'll be the same in Guam if it isn't now. Otherwise, yeah, uh, rather than spend 400 a month just for me and and get nothing out of it because you know of all the litany of things they don't cover um maybe we just get the you know get my wife insured as much as possible uh through phil health and then um and i just hope that if something needs to be done we come back here um to the states and do that however um another thing that kind of i've thought about is I mean, and my wife brought this up first. Maybe we need to go live part of the year in the Philippines and then part of the year in the States, maybe six months here, six months there, just to make sure I can handle it, just to make sure I can deal with the heat and being away and, and what are we, whatever we have to deal with. And that's that's good advice, actually. Uh, Part of me wants to just make a clean break, sell everything we have, and never look back, uh, and only come back and stay in a cheap hotel. Um, you know, if I need to come back for something um, for a few weeks or a month. And then an, another uh, viewer made the, a, a really good comment. They, they said, well, you know, you can consider selling your house, buying a much smaller, cheaper condo, which we could do, um, something that, you know, you don't wouldn't have to worry about who's taking care of the lawn, the snow, the grass, the utilities, because some of these places you can get, you know, rather inexpensive compared to a house, just a small percentage of that. And, uh, just go back and stay for a month or two and, uh, have Isa see her friends and, um, um, I don't know. Uh, I can see the doctor. She can see the doctor. Um, she could even keep her car there, her, you know, beloved car that she really likes. We could keep a car there. Uh, probably have to have somebody start it once in a while. I don't know. Um, but, you know, there are places that they roll in the cable and the electric and all that. And it's not all that much if you have the condo paid off. You know, that's that's a good idea too. And that was from uh, another viewer. Six months, I don't know. To me, that seems too long. Well, for Isa, uh, I'd rather have her maybe nine months in the Philippines, three months here, two months here, 10 months in the Philippines. Um, you know, those are things that I'm, I'm open to. I'm also opening to just leaving and selling everything and not coming back but you know having her see her friends and and um, talking to our financial advisor again who um yeah, she'll still be there she's she's young the financial advisor but you know um seeing people that i that i am still in touch with that might not be a bad idea one of these days i'm going to do videos before we go to the philippines here in december about what i'm going to miss from uh, the United States. And maybe some of those things I, I wouldn't have to miss if we could come back for two or three months. And that's, 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 that's a good idea. And it's a good possibility. Um, as long as I don't feel like I, I'm, I'm uh, shortchanging Isa by, and, and she may want to escape the heat for nine months and come back and see her friends and, and, and go to some other places, you know, that she's liked, who knows? Uh, but we'll see. She may have, you know, another half dozen friends by then, and that idea may be really appealing to her. Anything's on the table right now. Clean break, you know, three and nine, six and six. I just, I just don't know that she would want to be away uh, for that long. Three and nine, I'm, I'm much more open to that. So that's. That's something that that we've thought about. That at first I, you know, I, I tend to think black and white. I'm thinking you either go or you stay. Well, it's not necessarily the way it has to be. Um, 
So, you know, risks going to the Philippines, flying for some people is a risk. Uh, and you'll have to do a lot of flying to go to the Philippines is for, from here. It's four flights. One of them used to be 14 and a half hours. And that got traded for, I think it's a 12 and a half hour flight from, from where? Uh, Detroit maybe to Tokyo and then a layover, another four or five hour flight to uh, Manila. So that's even longer. Um, so, uh, you know, the flying and, um, you know, if, if that's an issue, um, you know, of course, getting there and not knowing where to go or what to do, uh, that could be an issue. Um, you know, I went out there not knowing what I was doing and, uh, I almost missed my flight because I didn't check in, didn't even know what that meant, or at least I didn't remember, or I didn't look at my notes. But the plane had boarded when I got there, when I figured out that I wasn't in the right place when I got to LAX and I had to take a shuttle. I didn't know that. Stood in the line for half an hour before realizing it wasn't moving. And I was told to go in that line. Well, that was wrong advice. So I made a phone call. and was told you have to take a shuttle to this place. So I did, showed up, nobody there. Uh, they had boarded. Well, I ended up getting on the flight. That was an adventure. And uh, uh, I just thank God made sure I got there because I, I just got up and went and after I got my passport and time off and, um, and it, it worked out. Um, but again, and I'd never left the country. I think I'd left uh, the state a couple of times. Uh, but you know, another country, whole different deal. Um, one thing that maybe some people would have an issue with is, is going to this phrase my wife hates, and that's third world country. Um, but you've heard it before, and um, you might wonder, well, what is it really going to be like? There's lots of videos on, on what it's like. It'll be an eye-opener for you the first time. Um, if not a shock, I guess, if you've never, never been, um, to the Philippines, there's lots of, um, you know, poverty there. It's not all poverty. Not all people are poor, uh, by any means. And, um, but you know, you might worry about the food. You might worry about the water. You might worry about, you know, uh, getting sick, uh, feeling strange, feeling too alone being away from family and friends. I mean, when you've spent a day and a half, you know, flying 500 miles an hour plus layovers, you, you realize just how far away you are. I never had any kind of weird feeling because I was there to get married and, and I did, but you know, it's a long, long way. If you're in California, then it's a little bit closer, you know, maybe, um, you know, 13, 14 hours, to get there, depending on where you're, you're gonna, your final stop is. But sometimes you got to take four or five flights, especially if you're trying to save money. But then that could take you 42 hours, you know, to get there too. So uh, I just pay whatever, whatever it takes to get there the, the fastest, because uh, it's the longer you sit, the worse it is on your back. And if you got a bad back like me, you know, then that's that's an issue. I was just there in the Philippines, middle of July, New York Mets fan. Well, congratulations. Um, we're going in uh, December, and that'll be my fourth time there overall. And my wife was just there in January to help, you know, stock up the house with furniture and, and things like that. Two days to overcome the jet lag. Um, I must be one of the rare people that, I don't know, I mean, I kind of sleep a lot when I get there for maybe a day and a half or two days, but I don't know if that's just because I can't sleep on the planes or if that's the jet lag. Um, but that's, a, that can be a problem too. You know, uh, some serious jet lag potentially. Um, when you, when you came, when, when we came back or when I came back the first time, by the way, I, I have a headache here. I, I don't want to pass out. Like I sometimes feel like I'm going to do here. Um, but, you, uh, I think I left at, I don't know, it was at 6 a.m. in the Philippines and got back here at 6, 
30 or something like that in the evening because I gained back 12 hours. So I had um, 12 hours lost in time, except it'd been more like, you know, 26, 28 hours, something like that. I don't know. It was a long day, but I didn't have any trouble with that. But I think I was so excited that I just came back and from getting married that that probably I was kind of numb and just just from that surreal experience that I didn't really feel the jet lag big time uh, jet lag Michael and Heidi coming back to the United States two days for me yeah uh, wake up at 2 30 a.m wanting dinner it's it's quite an experience um, you know when you go there you know you've got these the time zones are, are quite a bit different I just try not to think about it I think um, I think my phone automatically adjusts to the time. I'm not sure. Your watch uh, probably won't, depending on what kind of watch it is. So um, then you got to keep in mind what time it is back in the country. You know, if you want to, you know, communicate with people. But yeah, you're you're far away. Now, um, I I don't know personally anybody that has been personally has been scammed or suffered you know, a big loss by going to the Philippines, but there's lots of uh, stories out there, unless it's the same stories repeated over and over. I personally don't know anybody that's had a bad experience in the Philippines. I know that there are many, you know, people that have, um, and a lot of that is not having enough money, having something happen uh, physically, to them health-wise, running out of money, getting scammed, um, those things can happen. But I I don't know anybody personally that's had horror stories, and we're learning and we're finding more people here that um, that are married to Filipinas uh, where I live. So and some people are, are just more risk averse than others. You know, they just don't consider the outcomes. They just up and go, they figure come what may, they can handle it, or they don't know what the risks are, so they kind of go unprepared and they're, they're caught unaware. Um, some, some people may feel like they have um, nothing to lose, everything to gain, um, but it's, it's still good to write down the pros and cons of uh, making a move to the Philippines. The government, is anybody, does anybody here have concerns about the government? Yeah. Right now, Duterte's approval rating is still very high, probably an all-time high for a president in the Philippines. You know, Isa thinks extremely highly of him, as do many Filipinos. Um, but I think they have six years for uh, the total term that he can have. So that means he probably won't be in office when we go there. Um, I think he's doing his best to, to try to clean up corruption on uh, different levels um, however you know he can't do it forever there are limits and and uh, they'll have different uh, a ruler or a president then and um, how that will go you know, is anybody's guess and uh, of course the thing that comes up a lot is you know do you consider it too risky to own land in the philippines and assuming that the foreigner uh, really can't own it. He can have his name on all the the titles and deeds and stuff like that. Um, however, it still seems that if you know his wife were to die, um, that probably it goes somewhere else to the the next of kin. Uh, if that is true, that um, foreigner cannot own land in the in the Philippines and um, um, well, we own land in the Philippines and, um, we have a house there and there's, uh, ha uh the house is on different land there, uh, than the other land. So, um, the one is an investment for much, much greater into the future. And, um, uh, that's just, um, something that, that doesn't concern me. Obviously you need to be confident that your marriage is going to work out. Um, and, uh, my wife has not given me any reason to, uh, to distrust her and to think that she's going to be, uh, unloyal. And, um, 
I understand, you know, but I also look at it this way. Normally, I figure to die before she does because we have a 27-year age gap, and that would be the case wherever we are. So I certainly want to leave this property to her. Anything we have there, I want to leave to her. It's not like we're the same age. I mean, there's likelihood is uh, that she's not going to die first. Um, that is a concern for me, uh, but not from not from not owning land. Um, you know, if uh, if she dies first, what's going to happen? Well, uh, I can tell you what I what I believe will happen, and and what she has told me will happen, and that is, um, you know, I'll I'll just continue to stay uh, with her family in the Philippines. Um, we have we're on good terms now. We should be on great terms. <laughs> we'll be on better terms as we get to know each other more in the coming years. We're going to have a whole month in the Philippines coming up here. I'm just trying to find my notes again. And um, so I think I would stay with them. Now, people talk about emergency plans, and I haven't mentioned emergency plans like, I don't know, get out of Dodge quickly plan. Um, you know, if something terrible happened, I'm not sure, or was very dangerous, and I, I haven't discussed this with my wife, but... I'm not sure she would want to leave. So I'm certainly not going to leave without her. I don't know what we're talking about. I mean, something that's just real dangerous. I, I can't see pulling her away from her family um, and having a worry to death about her family. Uh, but, you know, hey, that's something that crosses my mind. Uh, what if? Um, and if, if something were to happen to my wife, uh, I would not, I don't think I would come back to the States, which is one of the reasons why I in. would prefer to kind of sell everything and not look back. Um, but if my wife feels like, you know, she wants us to come back for a couple months, a year, uh, that's fine. But eventually whatever we have here is going to have to get sold anyway. If we downsize in a smaller place, a condo, something like that, eventually, it's going to have to be sold unless my wife wants to keep coming back for the rest of her life, which I wouldn't expect her to. Um, but I would just stay in the Philippines. I, I, I assume I would be staying with her family and um, I would have no shortage of uh, people that I knew there and, and I could get around. Um, I would not want to come back because the whole experience to me of marrying my wife so quickly, going to the Philippines, knowing her family, investing in her and in them like I have, um, I just couldn't see coming back. At that point, as long as I can have air con and can get to the doctor when I need to, and uh, I just personally don't think I would come back if something happened to my wife. Of course, I'd probably die of broken heart anyway uh, if that happened. But, you know, what if? What if your spouse goes before you do? You just, you just never know. I mean, you could always say what happens if we go to the Philippines and we end up having a baby right before we go or right when we get there and then something happens to my wife. Then what am I going to do? You know, I mean, could that happen? Anything could happen. Anything could happen. Uh, Tim Tom Redpill, thank you for being here. Welcome. Um, I'm glad you joined us tonight. I was talking about risks. It can be negative, but it is what it is. You you want to think about everything and um, get as much comfort level as you can uh, mentally before you, you make that big move to the Philippines. Um, yeah, why would you move if you, move if you don't feel safe? Well, the thing about that is how, how safe do you feel? I feel really safe here where we are now. Um, although, you know, 60 miles away, there's the Bloods and the Crips. Um, there's bad areas in every town. Um, you know, as far as accidents, 
that we just had a car accident, somebody right outside our house, you know, six blocks down the road, somebody got killed. I mean, safety and crime. Look what's happening in the United States. You, you can't go anywhere without reading about the latest, you know, mass killing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, there's risk everywhere, but you don't want to go somewhere either and be on pins and needles, you know, worrying about what's going to happen, worrying about, I just have to get rid of this somehow, worrying about if something bad's going to be happening, there's risk and, and you need to know what those risks are. And then when you go, you need to uh, accept whatever those, those risks are. If you worry for your physical safety, then maybe there's a different place you need to move to in the Philippines. If you're worried about the weather, you can move to a place like Davao that's not likely to have the bad weather. If you're worried about crime, there are places in the Philippines you can avoid that are known uh, to be more dangerous in. Um, yeah, and, and Tim Tom, a lot of people visit the Philippines. Uh, but they wouldn't move there. Um, in my case, uh, you know, I've been married for a little over four years, and we have a house there, and, and, and it's, it's safe. It's relatively, I mean, all things considered, weather, safe in Davao, the crime, it's safer there, we think, than other places. Um, so, you know, um, I think we're kind of, hedging our bets there. I think I feel, I feel safe there. My biggest concern is I've had so many health issues. Can I get everything sewn up and repaired or is something else going to happen? You know, like, like my neck is bad and it just doesn't get bad enough to finally have surgery. Then we go out there and I don't know, bumpy, <laughs> really bumpy ride on a Jeep knee and there goes my neck. Um, you know, then what? I mean, I don't know. You can't live in fear. That's for sure. You you can't live in fear. And um, I've enjoyed my visits there. Um, but because family is there, and that's where my wife would prefer to be, and I prefer her to be happy. Um, you know, my family, was, there's just my mother and my aunt left and, and a cousin. That's about it. Uh, you know, when my, my mother lives with us, you know, she's 86. Um, we don't have a big family. Like I said, my friends are all married and gone. And, um, you know, she'd be the one living apart from everybody she knows. And her family is big, of course. So I think for her sake, we'll go live there. Um, yeah, medical checkups and stuff like that. There's certain checkups they can do in the Philippines. Um, but as far as major, we talked about the early, some kind of major medical condition. Yeah. I, if, if I'm getting that social security, some people don't take that social security out of their pension because they feel like, well, yeah, I may go two or three years without really using it. Do I really want to do that? But then if something happens and it's serious and you, you can get back to the States and, uh, meet with somebody that you've already met with and knows your your body uh, that particular body inside and out that, that your neck or your back or your knee or something then um, you can get treatment in the states with uh, as if you were here um, with medicare but you got to be 65 you know, 65 or older um, you know nothing wrong with going back and forth i know uh, tim tom there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that it's just my personality is pretty much I want to go all in and it's always been that way. It doesn't mean that I have to die that way, but I'd rather just go and, and not look back, not look in the rear view mirror and invest my life in the new, new place, uh, not have regrets. Um, but as I said earlier, you know, there's wisdom in splitting it up somehow two months, 10 months, three months here, nine months there, that's possible. My health might be in a situation where I can't go for 12 months, and that's that. Then I can be here knowing that I'm going to use the Medicare that will come out of the uh, Social Security, and um, and that would be a relief, you know. Uh, 
but then you can't always time everything to work out in your you know your schedule but yeah there's nothing wrong with that and i i am open to that look you know i've learned the older you get you have to learn to be <laughs> flexible um and and it may very well be that we never make a clean break because both my wife and i would agree to splitting time um, and that's that's possible you know a few months ago that would have been no nope, forget it but i am i am open to that um, well there's other beautiful countries but you know my wife's uh, her favorite country would be um the philippines uh, well i'm not well actually i'm i still have to work for um what to get to 62 i'd have to work for over a little over four years and uh, i do want to travel to other places now and then um which is one reason i'd like my wife to get her citizenship so she'd be free to travel pretty much anywhere and um that would be great um if physically i can handle it um but yeah uh, just because we would retire there doesn't mean I, I wouldn't want to see different places in the philippines i would like to see italy um i would like to go back to paris i mean who knows there's there's probably other places we can go to see that, that won't be as expensive either um but as far as where we hang our hat so to speak that would be the philippines i appreciate your comments tim tom and and, and everybody else uh, you know this is a topic that a lot of people you know talk about there are reasons as i started the show to go to the philippines um but there are considerations you know if you're going to really make the move there full time then there's more things to consider if you're just going to go on a vacation um, as far as uh, family and, and money requests and stuff like that uh, for me or anybody else you know it's best if your wife learns to control that situation and i think i think she can because um i've tried my best to educate her on you know how money works when you retire your social security pension 401k um, and i didn't know this until like six months ago yeah when i retire 62 i get my pension and you can kind of estimate what that would be at 62 63 64 65 basically at 65 and and you take off eight percent a year below every year below 65 and uh, that you're not going to get and you can add eight percent a year after 65 until like what 69 is the maximum so 62 would be the minimum before we go and we know what that would be but then when i die isa gets basically nothing until she's 60. when she is 60 and remember she's only 30 almost 31 now that's a long time then she will have to file for my to get that social security back and she might even be able to get more uh, than i'm getting um at 62. i mean right now i'm not even quite 58. but she has to realize you know you have to be careful with the money because she's gonna she's not gonna get my social security anymore after i die until she's 60. so um as we get closer i think she'll realize you know when she has to that she has to learn to make money last and and uh i don't expect her to to not you know help her family i want her to help her family and um you know but she has to be realistic about that and that's just something she's going to have to um to handle while we're there and then even you know after after i'm gone um blog when you go well yeah definitely definitely this december i want to i want a blog that's going to be a big deal uh i'm going to have five or six videos leading up to it all about retiring in the philippines and um maybe one a day for six days i think that's the way i've got it scheduled now and then get there and then try to uh, have a couple of videos a day because we'll be in our house that I have not seen yet um, other than pictures. Um, it was fully furnished. It was finished building, what, January of this year? Maybe December of last year and Isaac got everything in it. 
um, in January. So it's it's been lived, lived in now with some family and we're going to be there too. And that's going to be the arrangement when I retire. So it's going to be called expat trial run in the Philippines. There'll be a playlist. I'll try to you know vlog a couple times a day from there. Unfortunately, I don't have a thousand subs, so I can't use my phone and do lives. I have to use my phone and record them or be at home. I assume a laptop is not a mobile device and then I can do lives from the house. And, um, and I want to do that because then it's like, okay, we're not in a condo anymore. We're, uh, we're going to kind of be the way it's going to be when we retire. Hopefully I'm not in so much pain. Um, but that will be a pretty good view of what it's going to be like dealing with the heat and the roosters and, the, you know, just getting around. We're going to be close to the, you know, the, the beach, which is going to be really cool. The mall. Um, we'll get full-time air con when we move in for real. Um, otherwise, we'll just have coolers, uh, portable coolers and fans. Uh, we might even install the, the heater and the, the shower. Um, you'd think when it place it's so hot that you would like a cold shower, but nope, I still like the, the warm water if possible. So yeah, we I definitely want to blog and and hopefully that'll be a, something that really um, jumpstart this channel, um, which has been, uh, I don't know, two years now, 276 subscribers now. I seem like I gain one or two and then I lose one or two or I gain three and then I lose two or gain two and lose one, you know, and uh, pretty flat, but at least it's still moving in the right direction. Um, and I've got a lot of topics left to, to do and um, going to Philippines, who knows what we'll talk about. I'd like to meet a couple of vloggers out there and uh, that'll be pretty neat if, if possible. Uh, Tom and uh, Ruth, they're like four hours away. Uh, Philippines on Demand is uh, a lot closer. Uh, I'd like to meet both of them. Um, debts are not paid off now, um, but, you know, hopefully by the time we would retire. Uh, and, and by the way, um, we're not going to leave as long as my mother is alive. My mother lives with us. She's 86. I just say 62 for me, and I'm not quite 58 because that's the earliest I can get uh, Social Security, 62. Um, so, I mean, it could be earlier than or later. I mean, I can, I can withdraw from, you know, pension and 401k. If I'd, I'd rather not. I'd rather just live on the Social Security, you know, plus uh, that other income when we're there. Um, but, you know, the debt's... They're getting paid off. Uh, the house is the biggest one. I mean, the house here. But other things are getting paid off in time. And uh, But that's, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because, well, you know, you're going to have to, well, again, if you're going to keep a place here, then you got to keep a vehicle here. I mean, we got to get, and the cars will be paid off. But, you know, uh, if we keep one, that's great that would help, help for that to be paid off and a, a, an inexpensive condo what would that be maybe i don't know sixty thousand uh, dollars and at a certain place i think you can get one for that here um if you get that paid off in cash your car is paid off in cash well then it's a lot you know that's that's nice that's all part of the mental comfort to go and not worry about that but you know my health is something a condition that, that kind of concerns me and what could happen out there concerns me. But, you know, the debts, um, that's one thing, you know, if it's not one thing, it's something else. You might be in good shape financially, financially, but not in good shape physically. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, the first person that has, um, you know, you, you want to have your debts paid off, uh, whatever debts you have uh, paid off. How about this? You retire in the Philippines, and then you find out once the uh, the bloom is off the rose that you're bored out of your mind. You know, bored out of your mind. What are you going to do 
in the Philippines. And um, that's something to, uh, to think about. Um, what are you going to do for income? Um, some people have, you know, they, they're very successful to YouTube channels. Uh, they can go out there and, and what they make, even though it's not a lot here, um, can go a long way in the, in the Philippines. I mean, even, even two or three hundred dollars a month is, is going to help or four or five hundred a month. That's, that's really, I think that'd be outstanding. Anything above that would be really, really good. Uh, if you can make money from your channel, otherwise, you know, you, um, hopefully you're not constrained to have to work when you're there. Um, unless it's something you can do and enjoy and it's, it's online or you're teaching or something like that. Um, otherwise you better have a hobby and I, I want to have this channel. Um, we're talking like four years or so. Yeah. I, I, I hope this channel is alive and well, um, that should help. I think it helps to be in the Philippines. I think people like watching videos uh, and with the roosters crowing and the, the 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 horns honking and and all of the scene, scenes of the Philippines and and know that you're there and uh, that you're not here and you're thousands of miles away um, dealing with everything there um, that should help um, and yeah I mean I'd like to uh, spend ample time doing that when you're working six days a week, like I am now, I don't spend much time uh, preparing and doing stuff unless I'm on vacation or sick or whatever, you know, have surgery um, and you're home a lot and you, and you have more time. But that would uh, be, that's what I want to do. I, I do want to continue this channel out there. Um, also, um, you know, get involved with uh, whatever church we go to. I mentioned travel some, um, even if it's in different places in the Philippines, I'm sure there's many places my wife has not been to uh, in the Philippines. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm a big sports fan of uh, our sports teams here in, in Nebraska. So I'll be getting, uh, you know, Huskers.com. Uh, it's like $9 a month, whatever. And, and you can watch all the sports. You know, all, obviously I care about, you know, men's basketball and football but i can watch all the games there and and keep up and in all of that and that's one thing i would miss uh, uh terribly if i had to just not know what's going on back here but um i can do that to kind of make me feel like i'm still at home you know i've been a husker sports fan since i was like what 10 and uh, we won a national championship when i was think 10 and then when I was 11 so uh and then 94 and 95 and a, kind of a shared one in 2000 or something so um yeah I think we're getting big, to be good again and I I want to keep up with that so um I don't anticipate being bored uh, in the Philippines uh, but that's something that uh that can happen oh yeah I've heard people go and then come back and um, like I said, I don't plan on coming back unless we decide to go, you know, three months here, nine months there. So, um, yeah, what I, I think I would be kind of lonely back in the States. I think it's been such an incredible experience marrying my wife. And, um, and I, I really, I hope to be with uh, my wife until, until the day I, I die. And, and, and that would be, in the Philippines. So, uh, you know, I, I never thought I would end up marrying a woman from the Philippines. And I, I don't want to think at all about being without my love beyond the sea. So we're going to take our love beyond the sea to the, the Philippines at retirement. Hopefully uh, we'll be healthy enough to do that. And um, if anyone else has any comments uh, they would like to make about this or anything else, uh, I can stick around for a, a few minutes, and um, if you want to talk about what what you think is risky, if any of you 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 uh, gentlemen plan on retiring the Philippines, uh, what your biggest concern would be? I've kind of shared mine, um, 
everybody's situation is different. I appreciate the, the thumbs up. I appreciate everybody being here tonight. And um, um, hopefully, uh, I just have to play it week by week, whether we're going to have a, a live stream next week or not. But uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Um, as I get a little bit personal about my own concerns about uh, retiring in the Philippines and what my options might be. And hopefully that's helped some people. And like I mentioned earlier, I, I have gotten some good advice from some viewers uh, about this topic. And uh, I, I appreciate everybody's concern. So until next time, uh, that is it for tonight. I hope everybody has a great week. And this is Bob from Love Beyond the Sea.